Hello, welcome to Saltland Gaming. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at End the Napoleonic Wars by White Dog Games. Uh, one of my favourite game companies actually. Do a, have a very long list of really good, really uh, thematic and really flavourful uh, solitaire games. Typically designed by this guy, R. Ben Madison. So I actually received this game a few weeks ago, but I haven't really had much of a chance to delve into it yet. So I wanted to do like a, you know, just go over the components. More or less an unboxing, or in this case, uh, unbagging, but... Because uh, these games actually come in these big Ziploc bags, which I really like because it means I can store them a lot easier because I have quite a small flat. Um, so anyway, uh, as I was getting the game out, some of these counters actually fell out. So I'm going to take a quick look at these. So um, White Dog Games outsource, outsource all their printing to a company called Blue Panther. And I'm a big, big fan of these um, counters. They're like heavy... Uh, like MDF chipboard kind of thing, and I just love the um, the artwork on them. I haven't encountered a White Dog Games game with bad counter art, so um, I don't really know how the game works so far. Um, but these are some prominent figures from the time. So um, we've got uh, Johann Wolfgang Goethe or Goethe. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name. Um, it's a name I've heard, but I don't really know much about. Obviously, we all know this guy down here. Um, we've got Alessandro Volta, who I believe was like a, a, a physicist, kind of, you know, a classic sort of Renaissance man. And then Francisco Goya, who was a, a painter. Um, I'm not really sure on how, um, how these uh, figures come into the game, but it's really interesting to see figures like this in the game, or in a game in general, especially a war game. Because um, what what I really like about White Dog Games is they always blend kind of the political side of it, of the of the uh, event and the history with the with the conflict side, and they always just go that extra mile to give you that kind of um, historical immersion. Some other ones that fell out. Uh, this I believe is um, sorry Napoleon's wife Josephine. And they've got Napoleon here, very handsome, handsome man, at various points in his life. Again, I'm interested to see how the game works and where these pieces come into play. Um, my dad is a very, very big uh, Napoleon fan. Uh, maybe not fan, but he, he admires him a great deal and he's... he's uh, very um, very interested in the time period, uh, the aesthetics of the period, and just kind of that way of life. Um, so I kind of got this game to um, to do some digging of my own into this period in history, because I, you know, I know secondhand some stuff from him, but I thought it'd be nice to uh, to do some some of my own research. And uh, I'm not saying I'm just going to use this game for the research, but I find White Dog games are always a really good way. To, um, to delve into a subject that you have interest in. So, the cover, I guess, you, know, this, you can get this in a boxed format, and this is what the box cover would look like. Really, really nice artwork there. Quite classy, I will say. And the back of the box, I won't go into that too much. So, rule book. Um, I always find these rule books are really well written, really nicely laid out. Um, you know, you've got a very clear sequence of play here. Um, usually these games are very um, procedural, I guess the word would be, but they're never dry. Like I say, you've got stuff like diplomacy, coalition phase, <laughs> gentleman phase, abdication phase. No idea what these are yet, but I'm very excited to delve in. Um, what amazes me is how they deliver these quite in-depth games in a very short, short rule book. Got nice quotes here, just give you that nice extra layer of immersion. Um, so yeah, this rule book is only 12 pages, which is really nice. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long to learn the game. And as somebody who's played quite a few White Dog games, there are some similarities between them. So I think I could potentially pick this up quite quickly and quite easily. So we've got the map here, the game board, and that. Personally, I really like this. I think it's really nice. It gives a flavour for the era. You've got these... These paintings here, old-fashioned map of Europe in the background. Um, you know, all these, all these overseas territories. 
Senegal, Cape of Good Hope, Portugal, let's say it's overseas territory, but you know what I mean, Malta, Corfu, Serbia, Balkans, Caucasus, looks awesome, really like this map, got some paintings, some more battles, um, I'm going to be very interested to see how this all ties together and how this works, it looks awesome. Kind of point to point style, different boxes as opposed to like an actual geographical map. Um, they, I, li I like these small format maps as well, it's nice, don't take up much space. But they typically come with something like this, which will be your sort of turn sequence, and there'll be different events that happen uh, throughout the game, which um, you know typically t tend to be period accurate. Uh, again, I'm not too sure. Um, Battle results table, this is where you'll keep um, your forces. Oh, sorry, light infantry table, battle result table, interesting. Um, in this game, I should add, you're, you're not actually playing as Napoleon, you're, you're kind of playing as the as an international coalition, or coalition, arguably the first ever sort of, like, proto-NATO almost, trying to take him down, uh, I believe, anyway. Um, so I'm really interested to see how this all works. Again, I'm sorry I can't tell you more about the game's function, but I'm sure I'll do a, a review soon. Uh, anyway, these are the counters. Again, like I said, really nice thick counters. Um, I know it's going to sound weird, but they have a very distinctive kind of barbecue smell to them, which I actually find quite pleasant. So you've got your French forces up here, Spanish, Bavarian, Prussian, Russian, uh, your British here. Austria, I'm not sure what these are. Really nice looking counters. Really nice artwork on there. Again, just adds that layer of immersion and enjoyment for me anyway. Different diplomats here. The Ottomans. Very cool. Again, these are the ones that fell out because these do punch out really easily. Uh, so look, sorry, I'm having a bit of a nightmare with my camera today. Very nice. Admiral Nelson up here. Part of Trafalgar. Not quite sure what these uh, these letters signify. Yeah, really nice counter sheet here. Really, really cool. Come to expect that from White Dog Games. I'm actually planning on doing a series on White Dog Games. It's one of my favourite things that they've released. And uh, they've got some stuff coming up this year which I'm really excited for. So yeah, there's the counters, map sheets, turn sequence, things like that. So this is another thing I really like about, um, about White Dog Games. They always have these really cool um, random event tables. and you, Depending on which turn you are, you roll. And whenever you come up with, you kind of... It'll correspond to something you look up in the rule book, and this is a really nice way to actually inform you of the history and give you like a, a good um, jumping off point to start researching. Um, so again, I know I keep saying it, but I'm just really excited to delve into this. This is the sequence of play, which looks quite intimidating. Big long list. So all of this is what you'll be doing in a single turn, basically. And I, I remember when I first picked up a White Dog Games game, and I thought. It was going to take days, but it does roll by really quick. In my experience, anyway, I'm not too sure about this one, but I wouldn't think it'd be too dissimilar. I'd imagine one a game would probably take somewhere between like maybe three and four hours to play, which is you know no uh, no mean feat. And you've got a scenario book here. So, oh, I see, so you could you can do the whole campaign if you wanted to, but I think you could also just do some short campaigns if you didn't have much time. It would be a good way to learn the game, actually, doing the short campaign. And this is where it's listed all the, um, all the, uh, the random events as well. I think, or is this something else? I'm not too sure. It might just be like a, a keywords list. Then we've got some designers' notes here. Um, I will say, uh, our Ben Madison has caught some flack in the past from being quite um, quite an outspoken guy, actually. Um, sometimes I agree with him, sometimes I massively disagree with him. But either way, 
I am not for censorship, and I think he's actually had a pretty rough go of it on a lot of forums recently. So I don't know the guy. Like I said, he's pretty outspoken. I think he's quite religious, but he's a damn good designer, and he always has something interesting to say. So I'm going to read that over a coffee later and see what we can find out. And then this is just, um, this comes with a lot of their games now. Basically, this is where you put all the counters. Uh, oh, that's what the letter, the letters are from on the back of the counter sheet. This is where you put the counters and you can kind of store them, get them all ready to, to make setup that a little bit easier. So, yeah, that is N, The Napoleonic Wars by White Dog Games, designed by R. Ben Madison. Oh, and the game art's done by Jonathan Carnell, I believe is how you pronounce that. Really excited to delve into this. Um, I think I'll do maybe a playthrough or just maybe not a whole game but a couple of rounds and then really want to do a review on this as well and like i said keep your eyes peeled for uh, a white dog games video coming up soon cheers guys i'll be on a good day and i'll see you again